So, I start so many things with so. Let's look at the nephron. The nephron. So, yeah, so. Needle pulling thread. Um, you should, uh, that's what's being drawn here. This is a nephron. You should know the parts. Let's review um, what's happening here in the nephron. So, remember here this part right here, that's the renal corpuscle. Right, corpuscles has two components, the capsule, which is the container, and then the working machinery, which is the glomerulus. All right, it used to be called Bowman's capsule, now it's just the renal capsule, whatever, the corpuscle as well. So, um, we have two blood vessels right here, there's just not room to draw them in, or try to write in the names, all right. We have efferent and afferent arterial, all right, blood comes in, Remember, the afferent has a wider diameter, bigger diameter than the efferent, so blood comes in at very high pressure. So blood swirls around through these capillaries. Remember, these are fenestrated capillaries. Windows, fenestra, windows. I have windows. So virtually everything comes out except two things, and you should know that. What are the two things that don't come out? What are the two things that don't come out? Proteins, red blood cells. All right. Remember, these are fenestrated capillaries, and the fenestra will allow virtually everything except the um, red blood cells. Remember, fenestrated capillaries found like in endocrine glands where you have to release big things like hormones into the blood. So proteins can get out of the fenestra, red blood cells can. But then the podocytes, the cells, have the filtration slits that catch the proteins. Bottom line is, proteins and red blood cells stay in the blood, but virtually everything else comes out including glucose, amino acids, electrolytes, urea, creatinine. Urea and creatinine, fine, we want them out. They're waste products, so fine, bye, never, don't come back, all right? Good luck. But these, you're going like, hey, kidney, WTF? We need these, what the hell? Kidney says, follow me, I shall show you. So, here from the capsule, see the little green dots are all the, little, all the things we've taken out. This is, we now have filtrate, all right? We start with blood. Afferent arterial, bigger in diameter, efferent smaller, blood under high pressure. We force everything out except red blood cells, proteins. Then all these little goodies come flowing down the tubule, the filtrate, the renal tubule. And pretty soon the tubule starts getting twisty. The, mu the ominous music plays, all right? The, the, there's a f fog on the ground, all right? But the tree, the forest, the weird noises. So... We twist all around, and, and so what area is this? What area is this where it becomes all twisted, and it's still, it's very close to the capsule? This is the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, all right? Let's see if we can make that prettier. Yeah, no, that really kind of, oh, that just spoiled it. Yeah, what the hell, all right. So, the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, this is where we're going to get all that good stuff back, all right? So 65% of all reabsorption that's done is done here in the PCT. And how is it done? Concentration gradients, active transport, okay? So here, in the tubule, all right, in the PCT, we've got active transporters, all right? We've got our old buddy, the SGLT, the sodium glucose transporter. Take advantage of that sodium concentration gradient and uh, move uh, glucose along with sodium. So we get stuff back, and in particular, we get back our glucose, our amino acids, our electrolytes. All right, you know, so it turned, it turned out okay. Nephron said, see, I told you it would be fine. So we got the good stuff back. We're in good shape. Notice we didn't pull back. We had no specific transporters for urea and uh, creatinine, so they just keep going. They just get further downstream. We, just, we wave goodbye as they pass downstream. Then we get into the descending loop, and then the, we loop, the, turn the corner, and then the ascending. Remember, there are thin segments, thick segments. We've done most of the reabsorption here in the PCT, but now we're going to fine-tune. Fine-tune, right? Move a little bit of water, depending on our current physiological state, our current state of homeostasis. Move some electrolytes, fine-tune. Then we come over here, we... We come back up the ascending nephron loop. It used to be called the loop of Henley. And then it gets all twisty again. It gets all twisty. And so what is this part called now? 
the part where it's twisty, but now in terms of our you know, following the river, it's like the Colorado River right here. This would be like Tor Weep over here. So, um, but you see, uh, we're now very far away in terms of how this stuff has traveled. So we're now in the DCT, the distal convoluted tubule. We're going to do more reabsorption here, but in the PCT, the reabsorption was all done by concentration gradients, active transport, pat, uh, facilitated diffusion, whatever. Now, hormones. Hormones are in charge. Remember two organ systems in charge of the human body, nervous, endocrine? So, hormones are going to have like the final, the, this is the last part of the tubule before it becomes the collecting duct and then is now urine, all right? It's filtrate basically until it hits the collecting duct somewhere in there, it becomes urine. Um, so uh, here we've got hormones that are going to control the movement of things back and forth. And what are we moving at this point? No, not so much glucose and amino acids, the big stuff. We're fine tuning a lot of electrolytes here. So look, sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, bicarb, hydrogen, phosphate, water, moving a lot of that stuff back and forth. And here are some of the main hormones that do that. And you should be able to go through these hormones and look at those electrolytes and figure out what each one of these hormones is doing to those electrolytes. Do you want to do that together? Oh, thank you. That would be so nice. So let's talk about aldosterone. Oh, buddy, aldosterone. Benny's brother, Benny Dosterone, aldosterone. Ran, ran a racket down on the south side. Aldosterone, remember, is the save sodium hormone. And when we mean save sodium, we mean save it in the body. Don't put it in the urine, save it. So aldosterone is going to move sodium back into the blood. And remember, when, what do we know about water and solutes? As sodium goes back into the blood, water will follow. Therefore, we raise our blood volume, raise the stroke volume, blood pressure goes up. That was aldosterone's job, remember? So aldosterone pulls water back with it. But remember what else? Remember how aldosterone works? It works by putting sodium potassium pumps into the tubule. So at the same time it's pumping sodium this way, pumping potassium the other direction. So we're actually going to excrete, well we're going to secrete potassium and then excrete it. Whereas we are reabsorbing sodium. So that's what aldosterone does. ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Remember diuresis means peeing. So we're not going to pee when we do anti diuretic hormone. What that means is we're going to pull water from the filtrate back into the blood. We're going to save water, all right? So whereas aldosterone saves sodium and water goes with it, ADH directly saves water. And remember how it does it? It put aquaporin channels in the tubules. So the aquaporin now are allowing water to flow back into the blood and that's what ADH does. And once again, that's going to raise the total blood volume, raise the stroke volume, and we raise the blood pressure. ANP. Remember, always need to pee. Atrial natriuretic peptide. Atrial because the sensors in the atrium. Natriuretic because it puts natrium into the urine. So ANP, always need to pee. ANP is actively secreting urine from the blood. I mean, uh, secreting sodium from the blood into the filtrate, all right? So it does, in some sense, the opposite of what aldosterone did, all right? It doesn't have a direct effect on potassium like aldosterone does. But AMP, going to be moving sodiums this way, water is going to follow, all right? You're going to pee more, okay? PTH, parathyroid hormone. Remember, this is our calcium hormone. So what does PTH do? Raises blood calcium, and it does that in part by putting calcium into the blood here. But remember, PTH also, whenever we move calcium, which, which other ion often goes the opposite direction of calcium? Phosphate. So PTH, remember, it's moving calcium back into the blood, but it's excreting or secreting and then excreting phosphate, all right? Calcitriol, all right, vitamin D. So remember, this is also raising blood calcium. So what does calcitriol do? Calcitriol is moving calcium back into the blood. That's its job, okay? And then calcitonin. Calcitonin, remember, does the opposite of PTH and cal calcitriol. What calcitonin does, it's, it doesn't really play a huge effect here in the tubule, but it does inhibit reabsorption of both um, calcium and phosphate. So um, what calcitonin is going to do is it's going to cause um, you to retain 
Uh, it's going to cause you to uh, secrete calcium and phosphate will go with it as well. So there you have it. That's um, kind of what's happening in the nephron. So look that over. Think about that. Play the movie again. I might ask you to, on an exam, to uh, go ahead and show me this again. Show me how it works. Give me an overall diagram of the nephron. What's happening where? Filtration happening here. Everything comes out. Most reabsorption happening in PCT, controlled by active transporters, facilitated diffusion, concentration gradients, and most of the activity in the DCT under the control of hormones or moving ions one direction or the other. I think we're done. I'll see you next time. You'll see me next time, if you're lucky.